Well, I want to thank Mike, too. This is amazing. I mean, I didn't know this guy knew anything at all. Look what he put together. This thing is crazy. Oh, trust me, I don't know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Allison Sheridan. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. One of my pet peeves with Apple right now is that I refer to the Apple store as the Apple showcase because you can't buy anything in the store anymore. So Don McAllister was nice enough to loan me the dongle so that I could plug in an external mic and it doesn't work. But the mono price one is working just fine. <laughs> he still gets credit for loaning it to me. We'll see if I give it back to him. But yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't project. So you can't buy the dongle in store and when you get it, it doesn't work. So that's great. My name is Allison Sheridan. As they said, I do the No Silicast Mac podcast hosted at podfeet.com. This is my lovely website. Notice the uh, Mac stock advertising I have going there. And uh, I was just hoping to bring up I did a, uh, uh, actually, I don't know if my, oh, there it is, there it is. I did a, uh, a, a thing that ties right into what Guy and Gaz were talking about. I made a QFD, a quality function deployment that allows you to figure out which kind of Mac you should buy. In this case, I only did the MacBook, the MacBook Air, and the MacBook Pro. And I did it because um, my husband and our, our friend Ron and I all bought new Macs at the same time. They were all our secondary Macs, and all three of us bought different Macs. I'm noticing that if I talk to this mic, it wrecks this mic. So I'm going to stay over here, Steve. We're trying to get as much recording as we can. Anyway, this is a really cool tool that lets you uh, put in how important, uh, how important a certain criteria is to you, and it calculates out for you. Like if you care about a retina screen, you give it a 9. You have to give it a 1, 3, or 9. There's a whole explanation. There's a video on it. But let's say weight is not that important. Speed is uh, kind of important. You can see that the, the uh, numbers are calculating down at the bottom. It's real nerdy and spreadsheety. I thought you guys like that. <laughs> so I named my show the No Silicast Mac Podcast so I could talk about, actually it doesn't technically always say Mac in there, but I named it so that people couldn't say I was off topic. So you really, uh, as much as those boys get off topic, I can get off topic too. So I, I did a thing on a hot water recirculate, recirculation pump last week that was really a great piece. So anyway, I'm not here to talk about that, though, but I just wanted to uh, plug my own show for a few minutes. Um, let me hide that for the moment, and we're going to hide that one. Oh, I didn't mean to close it. I just did. Oh, well, we'll come back to that. So what's that? Command Z. Command Z to reopen a window? Really? No way. Whoa. I didn't know it could do that. <laughs> All right, so uh, what do we say? We're supposed to learn something at every, every time, right? So I've done my one. All right, so I'm here to talk about a, a new application called Audio Hijack from Rogue Amoeba. Has anybody here used Audio Hijack Pro before? And how about older versions of Audio Hijack? All right, and how many people are using the new one, Audio Hijack 3? All right, good. So you guys can correct me when I say stupid stuff. Dave Hamilton already told me, when you're done, I'm going to tell you everything you didn't know afterwards. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's good, that's good. So Audio Hijack uh, Pro was, the, was a, a great application for piping audio to different things, and I'll walk you through how it works. Um, but it was, it was really kind of complicated and janky to use. Uh, once I got it set up to do what I wanted it to do, I never touched it again because I was afraid I would wreck it. Audio Hijack, the new Audio Hijack 3, and correct me if I say pro, because they took the pro word off of it, is very, very intuitive. It's visual, it's drag and drop, it's really, really easy to use. And um, before I forget, I just said it was visual. It's also completely accessible to the blind, which is a really, really tricky thing to do. And these guys simply built it into the product up front so they didn't have to do, there's not like, you know, band-aids on top to make it accessible. It's accessible up front. And I, I was blown away. I tested it and I thought, well, this isn't going to be accessible, but somebody's going to ask me. And I tested it. It was like, oh my gosh, you can use it without being able to see. So that's pretty cool. Um, if you have ever used any version, let's see, does this work if I do that? Does that embiggen it for you? Yeah. You'll notice it says that if you own any other version, one, two, three, whatever, old, non-pro, non whatever you own, it's only 25 bucks. So scrape out that old license key if you've got one. Uh, if not, it's 50 bucks. It's got a free download, and you can, anything longer than 10 minutes recording, uh, it'll have a watermark on it, an audio watermark. So you can, you can play with it and try it out. All right, I am going to not close, just hide that. All right, so let's talk about what Audio Hijack is there for. 
Uh, the kinds of, I like to start with a problem to be solved, and the kinds of problems it can solve is you don't want a big old mixer piping audio around. I don't, I, I had a mixer and uh, I had um, Victor Kahiao taught me how to use it, and I never understood it. And it got, I was always afraid if the housekeeper dusted, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't know how to put the settings back, even though I took a picture after Victor helped me. And it was really complicated. So I ended up getting rid of the mixer, and I use Audio Hijack for everything that I do, for every, all the audio on my podcast. And uh, so it's, it's to record audio, uh, but it, it's not just for podcasters. If you have, uh, say, an internet radio show that you, you would like to record, and the, one of the examples I'm going to show is the, uh, the keynote from WWDC. Let's say you wanted to capture that audio and save it and listen to it on your commute to work the next day because it was the middle of the night because you're from the Netherlands, right? Uh, that would have been a nice thing to have. You can do that. Um, you can use it to record audio off of uh, DVDs, off of uh, records. Anybody remember what records are? Um, I'm not going to get into how to do that because that's a little more complicated with the physical setup, but it's, uh, it's, that's another thing you can do with it. So I'm going to walk you through a couple of these sessions that you can set up and you'll see how it works. And the nice thing about the software is it's so easy to play with. You can experiment. And I'm starting to do more and more with it because I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I bet I could do that with Audio Hijack. Let me try to drag some of these things in and do it. All right, from the, uh, from the top here, we've got sessions, recording, and schedule. And uh, under sessions, we have nothing right now. This is just saying push that button. So I'm going to push new session. And you're going to see the template chooser. And this has got a bunch of built-in templates. And I'm going to back into those, but we're going to start with a new blank session. I'll just show you how easy it is to work with. So I'm going to double tap that. And yeah, let's put this up here. Actually, this on this little screen might be good to go full screen. No, that scares me. I'll just embiggen it a little bit here. Um, in order to use Audio Hijack, you need two things as a minimum. You can add lots more than two things, but you need an input and an output. Makes perfect sense, right? So up here, we've got our sources, and those are your inputs, and these are your outputs. You've got two different kinds of outputs. Below that, you're going to see that you have built-in effects, and these are all audio effects that, uh, that Rogue Amoeba has created, and these guys really know their audio. I'm not going to go through all of these, but we may play with one or two as we go through, but you see de-hum, de-noise, equalizers, um, a, a whole lot of different special effects that you can, you can add to your workflow, but you don't have to. Below that, you'll see it has audio unit effects, and this is for people like Dave Hamilton that understand what these things are. I don't know what any of this stuff is. I, I think I've actually played with some of it, but it was in the old audio hijack, and it terrified me, so I just stopped doing it. And then finally, down at the bottom, below all of those, let me, let me fold that back up. Below all of those, you also have meters, and these are visual representations, as you would have the little red lights on a mixer. These are visual represent, it's representations of uh, how high your, how your audio is. So we'll probably play with one of those at some point. Those are fun. All right, let's play with something. So here's an example. I'm going to put uh, an application out here. Oh, one thing I wanted to say, Audio Hijack is the simplest install you will ever find. You hit download, and you take the application, drag it into, uh, into your applications folder, and it doesn't go sprinkle stuff all over your, your Mac. It's just Dave's looking like that. It, 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 there's no installer or anything until you need two different things. And I'll walk through, I'll show you where these happen. If you want to do a scheduled recording, like I mentioned, Audio Hijack, if you want to schedule that, there's the schedule helper. And then uh, the other one is called Instant On. And this happens all the time. You fire up Skype, you're all ready to do a recording, and you hit Audio Hijack, and, and it, has to, it has to quit Skype and bring it, turn it back on. So it has to be the one to launch it. If you allow it to install Instant On, then you could do it right from within Skype. You can just go, boom, I'm already, I'm already in the call. We always forget, most of us anyway, forget to turn it on first. So Instant and On is really useful. So anyway, I've dropped one of these bricks onto the, um, onto the session template here, and I've got application, and I just simply click on it, and from there I can choose what application I want to record. So let's say I'm going to record, uh, let's just record Safari for now. And uh, I chose application on purpose. I can also choose microphone, and we'll, we'll look at that. But let's say I want to record uh, Safari, and then I need an output. So I can simply drag this here, and now it's going to simply go to the headphone jack, which we'll see whether my Mac will do it when my Macs didn't. <laughs> Get how I did that? It was really cute, wasn't it? Uh, so let's, let's bring up uh, Safari and uh, bring that back up where I am. See if we can get some audio playing from the Apple Keynote. And I'm hit, let's see if we can hear that. Actually, if this is working right, 
I should. So down here is a, is a record button, if you will. And it it's, looks like record, but it really means you're, you're saying go to the workflow. You're just making it go. So now when I hit this, if it's actually going to be, actually, you know what? Let me change this to a recorder instead of headphones since we've got it coming out here. I'm, if I click on that, I can change the output to, um, wait a minute. No, sorry. Let me get rid of the, I'm going to get rid of this output. I did a command delete. Instead, I'm going to make a recorder. Do you see that little line that's going between the two? That's, is, is that bright enough? Can you see that? Uh, it, that's going to show us the flow of the audio. And I'm just going to leave it at its standard recorder. And actually, it is still, it started to record right now. I'm going to go ahead and hit play here. And now you see the audio waveform is going across to the recorder. Now you don't hear it because I just piped the audio out to the recorder. I'm going to hit stop. And now it came back to the, head, to the uh, headphone jack. All right, let's take a look at the recorder and see what I just did. If I click on that, it defaults to uh, high quality MP3. But I can click right here and I can choose a lot of different options. I can go to an AAC, a, a, uh, a uh, uncompressed Apple lossless, an AIFF. That tends to be what I like to choose. Um, you can set tags in here. Um, one of my favorite things is you can change the, uh, the name of the file as it comes out. So right now it says date time recording. Let's just get rid of that. Let's say we want to call this Mac stock. And we're going to, over here, we can click on this and we can add the, uh, the year, the month, and the day. And now I've, every, every recording I make will have that appended on it. So that's kind of nice. You can set those up. Once you have something set up like this, like a recorder in this case that you want, then I'm going to change this to an uncompressed AIFF with max stock year, month, day. I can create a preset for that. And if I save that, so we'll call that max stock. Did I spell that right? Yeah, so I've got that preset. Anytime I create a recording, nothing to do with this session I just set up, a new recording session, I can just grab that preset and it's all ready to go. So it makes your workflow really smooth. Go ahead and stop that for a second. And then now I just created a recording by hitting that record button and I recorded that couple seconds of applause. If I go down here, I can hit recordings and I can play that back. I can play it right from there. I can also go to actions and I can reveal in Finder, open an editor, add to iTunes, a lot of different choices here. But there's our little MP3 file. And we'll, I guess on this Mac I have it set to open iTunes, don't I? So you see how I created that and how it, it dropped right in there. By the way, I know this stuff cold, so if you want to interrupt me with questions, it's not going to like, woo, throw me off my game. So if I say something that's confusing or you want me to repeat something, holler out, except for Dave. No. <laughs> oh, put your, oh, okay. I thought you put your hand up. All right. So, so now we've got sessions. This is that session I just created, this new blank session. We can change the name of that to uh, just recorder. And now I've changed, when I close this back down, this is my set of sessions I'm going to create. So I have one of these for uh, when I do uh, uh, my set. One of the segments on my show is called Chit Chat Across the Pond. I have one called CCATP. I have another one called my live show. I do my show live on Sunday nights, and I've got a really complicated setup. That's also saved as a session in here. Am I going too fast, too slow? About right? All right, I got one of these. Got one of those? Okay, good. All right, so that was... Uh, actually, let's open this back up and start messing it up. You might want to be able to do that recording, but you notice we couldn't hear it while we were doing the recording. Turns out you can add more than one output device. So I'm going to put this... Actually, I could do it after. I thought I could do it. Hang on, let me see if I can get these. They kind of jump around. Maybe it wants to be after. There we go. You see how those little lines were jumping around? You just kind of drag it until it represents what you want to, what you want to hear. I can now hit this recorder again. And when I hit play over here, you can hear it and it's making the recording at the same time. So sometimes you want to monitor what you're doing. Go ahead and stop that. So you can start adding these blocks and doing more things to them. So we'll go in here and uh, let's, oh, let's throw uh, what would be fun. Well, you could, like an uh, uh, equalizer in there. When you tap on that, then people who understand how to use equalizers would drag those little dials up and down. <laughs> the Dave Hamiltons of the world. And I don't understand this stuff. Actually, uh, Don said he's going to teach me how to play with the equalizer later, so that'll be fun. 
Uh, there's, there's presets within the equalizer, so if you don't want to learn how to do it, you've got a lot of different options here. I think we want dance as our uh, equalizer setup. <laughs> keep, you guys, keep you guys awake anyway. So you get in kind of the feel of how you can drag and drop these things. And let's say you're just like, ah, I don't understand that equalizer. Let me just hit a command delete and it's gone. So you can drag and drop these things, play with them, experiment with them really, really quickly and get a feel for how this is going to work. And a lot of times you put it together and <laughs> they're in sound anywhere. <laughs> so, okay, I'll just start over and make a new one. At least that's the way I, I work with this. All right, let's take a look. Uh, let's see. We'll, uh, we just did an application, but we could... Um, we could do this with the input, an input device that's a hardware device, and let me get rid of Safari. And what we can do here is, when I click on this, this is, this is looking for a hardware device, this is my internal microphone, so I've got the, a built-in mic. The reason I was trying to use this one was because we were trying to use a USB mic so I could demonstrate changing mics, but you can see I've pretty much got the built-in microphone. Do uh, you guys know what Soundflower is? What's its status? Soundflower was bought by Rogue Amoeba. Last I heard it, yeah. Okay, well, it's, it's still there. You can still download it. Uh, it's pretty clear that what they did was they scooped it under its wing from, what was it, was it Cycle 43 or something like that? Cycle somebody? Anyway, they, they swept it under the wing, but I don't think they've touched the one that's on the website yet because when I went to install it, it said it was an unsigned developer. So I wrote to them and they said, ah, yeah, we should probably fix that. And I, oh, and I think the security certificate had expired too. Uh, Dave, do you know what the, is there any uh, public knowledge of what the status is? There's no public knowledge of the status. Okay. I think they're managing the source code or something like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 They, they are. The future of it is what I think. The future is what he can't say. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't see beta in it. Oh, okay. I just did it yesterday to get it ready for this. Um, I'm probably going to do a bad job of describing what Soundflower is, and I actually would like to be corrected here, but Soundflower is a way of combining some physical devices uh, and, and other audio devices uh, into a single channel that then you can use as an input for something else. So when I'm doing my live show, um, I, I am recording into GarageBand with my microphone, but I'm also sending my voice and GarageBand both into uh, a live Google Hangout on air. Well, I need one microphone. Well, I've got, I've got two sources. What do I do? I pipe them into Soundflower. So you simply install Soundflower and it magically becomes a, a source here. And did I botch that up too badly? Uh, Missing? Okay. Both. It is, I'm going to repeat for the, uh, for the video, uh, but it's both an input and an output is what Dave was saying. So um, in this case, and I let it go to sleep, uh, one of the things I could do is instead of sending the output here to uh, headphones, <clears throat> excuse me, I could send it to Soundflower 2 channel, and then when I launch the, audio, the, the Google Hangout on air, when it go to pick my microphone, I pick my microphone as being Soundflower. Does that make sense? It's a little weird, but you just do it and it works, so... That's how I'm happy with it. <clears throat> Excuse me, I would like to thank Barry Folk for taking us to, uh, to dinner last night to a place where we had to scream to talk to each other, so that was great. <clears throat> My voice was fine before today, before yesterday, I should say. All right, uh, another thing you can do is system audio, and I'll just drag that in and show that that can be an input device. And uh, one of my favorite uses of this is, was um, uh, Marianne Gary had some weird noise coming out of her Mac, and I don't know if she used Audio Hijack, but that's something you do where you want to send it to the Mac Geek app and say, what is that noise? What is that? You can record system audio noise. I used uh, Audio Hijack Pro in the old days. Uh, you remember CDs? Well, well, you remembered records, so <laughs> you remembered LPs, so you got to remember CDs. We got a CD that said free digital download. We're like, wow, we'll get one more song. That'll be really cool. And we plugged it in, and it said, yeah, that's only for Windows. Well, I fixed their little red wagon. I launched a VM with Windows, turned on Audio Hijack Pro, stole the audio right off of it, and it was a pure digital recording just from playing it on that website, playing it inside Windows, inside a VM, inside using Audio Hijack. So you may not think you need it right now, but you're going to, one day you'll be doing something going, hi, I bet Audio Hijack could do that. And then you'll try it and you'll say, whoa, thank you, Allison. That's exactly, that's exactly how that's going to happen. You're practicing it. Thanks. Leon. 
All right, let's take a look at, so I've kind of just played around with a few of these, but let's take a look at what happens when you do new session and uh, just look at these. Actually, let me pop that down. The way Don McAllister would say, let me just pop that down. Uh, in the template chooser, you've got a bunch of different options here and we'll, we'll just walk through each one. Application audio, this is showing you an example of starting with, uh, this is kind of what I already showed you, but this is, starts with iTunes, it's got the recorder, and then it's going out to the headphones. So they give you some of these to start with, and I really encourage you to try each one of those and see how they work, and you play with them and start messing them up, and pretty soon you'll get the idea of how this works. So let me close that one, and you'll notice a new session is getting recorded each time, or getting created each time I do that. We'll do another new session. This is DVD audio. So this is, now, now you really gotta go back. You need a DVD and you need an optical drive in order to do this one. So we'll see if anybody's got that. So again, it's just the application is the DVD player. It's going into the recorder. It's a 256 meg, uh, kilobyte, kilobit per second MP3. And the output device in this case is uh, headphones along with the recorder. And let's do another one. Some of these get more interesting. This one's really, really interesting. Um, have you ever just got some audio that's too quiet? You can't hear it. Can't hit it, hear it. So this is uh, starting with system audio. Let's start this. Um, actually, let me change this to, oh, I, I guess I could just do system audio. This is really interesting, and uh, I will not, try really hard not to blow your ears off. But let's start this playing. Actually, I'm going to turn this down. Whoops. No, I'm going to mute and unmute. Let's turn this down so it's not too loud. Let's start this playing. Right here, you'll see it says uh, 2x, 3x, 4x. I'm going to start the recorder, and it's going to double in volume. Heard it got a little louder. I'm going to go 3x. And I'm going to slide this up. Oh, good, he stops talking. Actually, let me start this back at the beginning. Are you going? Come on. Well, if there's no audio, that's not going to be very interesting. Why are we not hearing that? We were here in a second ago, weren't we? Well, just imagine as I was pushing these buttons, it got louder and louder and louder. But uh, when you get into each one of these levels, is it coming now? I can hear it. So if I go up to 3x, I can drag it up, go to 4x, and the video stops. That's great. All right, well, you got the idea. I guess I should have practiced what I was having it play before I did that. Uh, but anyway, that's a nice way to just gently move the audio up. Each time you hit the next button up, so if you're 2x and you go to 3x, it starts back with it down at the same volume and you drag the slider. And then you go up to the next one and you drag the slider. So it doesn't blast your ears out. You get to choose how high to go. Allison, does that just affect output or does it increase the volume on the file? So the question was, does that just affect the output or does it increase the volume on the file? If you had a recorder in between these two, I believe it would also do it to the file. I would assume so. All right, let me stop that one. You notice each time I'm hitting record here uh, to get it started. So let's do another one, another new session. Input device, that's just what we showed you. We did, that. we did that one already. We already know that one. You notice I'm making a big mess on my desktop here. Podcast is fun. This is, this is when I saw this, I was like, that's the answer to my problem. When I have somebody come to my house, like uh, Barry came to my house, I think he was on the, uh, on the podcast one time, and I don't actually know how to record two mics in my office. I know how to record you if you're on the other side of the globe, but I don't know what to do if you're sitting in the room with me. It's kind of ironic. But, uh, and that's because I don't use a mixer. If I had a mixer and all those dials and buttons and the XLR mics and act like a pro and compress and things like that, I would have that. But I don't have that. And it turns out if I just simply plug in, and this is saying internal mic twice, but pretend I had a second mic, I could plug the two mics in via USB to my Mac if I, had two Mac, if I had two USB ports on my 12-inch uh, MacBook, I could. So pretend I'm using my MacBook Pro at home. And uh, so I could plug the two mics in, I can send them to separate recorders, and then to one, uh, one final recorder. And I think the, way, the reason they, they did this as the default setup is to show you that you can have multiple recordings going on. And uh, let's say I'm recording Barry, and Barry, I don't know, belches, swears, no, Barry would never swear. But let's say he, he makes some weird noise. Uh, I could take these two separate audio files and cut that noise out of just his track. But if nothing goes wrong, I've got a track, a, a, a stereo track with both of us recorded. Now I did notice when I went in here, they actually set them both up as stereo and that's just silly. You should change that to mono so that you can, uh, uh, so that, because it's one mic, it's only, it's mono. There's no reason for that to be stereo that I can think of, unless Dave corrects me afterwards. 
so that was, that was really cool to look at this and go, oh, my problem solved. I don't have to worry about this anymore. Uh, let's go a new session here. And we talked about the record player, and this one's a really good example. Oh, there's a hide library button down here. I'll hit that. This is a great example of those, those special audio effects. They've got a de-click, a de-noise in the middle of this, so that de-click is made for recording off of, uh, off of your LP, so that's what that one's for. What's that? How would you do that? <laughs> oh, I just know how to push that button. I have, a, I have a syndrome, it's called music-specific music anhedonia. I am apathetic about music. It's a syndrome, I need a support group. Quit teasing me. I'm not even kidding about this. All right, now I'm gonna need somebody else to tell me what sweeten means. Sweeten makes it more awesome? More delicious? More delicious? All right, well if you wanna sweeten it, you push that sweeten button. I gotta have somebody teach me some of that part though. But I know how to use the tool really well. I don't want you to think I'm unqualified. Following Guy and Gaz, how hard is this to do? You know? it's, really, it's really a great slot. I wanna thank Mike Potter for where he put me in the uh, lineup. And uh, we talked about system audio before. Again, you put it in the row, you've got a recorder and an output volume, so your uh, output to your speakers, so you can hear yourself. All right, the next one's really fun. So. Um, this is for uh, how you would record Skype. And actually, let me close this one down. I want to show you what I did first. So I thought, okay, I want to record Skype. So I'm going to start a new blank session. And I did this before I saw how they did it. Let me pop that down. That's bugging me. All right, I dragged in an application. I said, okay, I want to have Skype here. And inside each of these blocks, like I've been showing you, there's a lot of different, as, each block has something different. Each brick has something different that you can change in it. In this case, Skype knows uh, to have it include audio input. So this recorder will record my voice and the voice of the other person. And this checkbox here, split between channels, allows me to edit those two tracks separately. So if I'm the one that belches, I can cut it out. Now what this can't do is if you have five people on the Skype call with you, all five are on one track. You can't separate those because it doesn't get that information, so it can't possibly do it. But the problem with this one is if you have include audio input, and then you put a, uh, let's see, we'll put a recorder in place, but then you put your speakers here. When you talk, you're gonna hear your own voice back with a very, very tiny delay. Now, people like Dave Hamilton have learned to live with that and be able to hear with a slight delay. Not that big of a delay? No, it's, it's too big. It's too big, okay. So I did this at first, I was like, oh man, this thing doesn't work at all, the old one was great. But all I did was I said, well, I wonder if I can put a second application block down here and put my headphones off of that and never have them, and have it go, doing two at once, and you can. And that I thought was a great solution. I thought, wow, that's perfect. Then I found out that they had another way of doing it, which I thought was, was really cool. The way they did it was they brought in the, the two channels. They brought, they've got Skype coming in, they've got the VU meter. I, I didn't show you that, but that's just gonna go like this and show the tracks. You can see both are moving you know, separately from the two tracks. It records the stereo audio track, and that's fine. But then on the second one, it, they did a duplicate the right channel. So it turns out you come in on the right channel, Skype comes in on the left channel. Wait, backwards. I come in on left, it comes in, Skype comes in on right, it says duplicate the left channel, and then I never hear myself when it comes out of my headphones. So I, I love that they, I did it my own way first, and then I learned the way they did it, and I went, oh, that's another, I didn't know about that duplicate right. That's really, really cool. Another thing I've added to my, um, uh, every, every time I record with Bart Bouchot's, uh every other week, wait, I don't want that one. I want, oh, it's right there. Um, Bart's voice is always too low. And every time I tell him, Bart, turn it up, turn it up. He says, yeah, but then I forgot to turn it down for my recording and then I'm too loud in my recording. Quit bugging me. So uh, he said, well, let's, let's take a look at what you can do here. And it turns out there's a balance thing. And I, I'm, yeah, I just turn me down a little bit and a little bit more of him and slide that little slider and now we come out perfectly every time. I have to remember to set it, but I always do it, by the way, I always, 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 always do a test recording. If I've recorded with Bart and five minutes later we get back on the horn and we're doing a Mac round table, I will test that recording again because it will always change. I don't know what it is, gremlins or neutrinos or something, but something always changes the audio. So I'm always amazed when people do a recording like, oh, it didn't work, it sounded horrible. Did you test it? Just test it. You only have to test a little tiny bit to get it to, uh, you know, to keep from having those huge problems. 
So let's see if I got any more left here. All right. Oh, yes. Yeah, Leon's reminding me about Instant On and the scheduler. Right, and so that's what I was kind of wondering as I listen to your podcast and I enjoy listening to Brian, my thought to myself was, does she have Instant On on this application all the time? So when? Yeah. The, you install on Instant On once, okay. and then from then on, you can have an application already open yes. and then say, I want to start recording. If you don't have Instant On installed, it'll quit Skype and bring it back on. So once you install it, you're done. Oh, good. Then you don't have to set it and forget it. No, yeah, yeah. It's definitely set it and forget it. And you don't, um, you will forget that it ever has to be done. But the first time you need it, it'll say, hey, would you like to have instant on? And while you're in the instant on window, it'll say, hey, you know, while you're here, why don't you do this schedule helper? And I, I guess I didn't, uh, I did not do that one, one yet. Let's, let's do web audio. Let's do a scheduled event. Um, let's say there's a URL like, I don't know, a podcast that does its show live every Sunday night at 5 o'clock Pacific time. So, uh, you know, podfeed.com slash icecast happens to be the link for that. I just, I just happen to have known about that one. So we'll go ahead and start that one. And then I can go into schedule. And uh, ooh, let me name this so that we, this is just called web audio. All right. So I'll go down into web audio is going to be the last one. And I can say I want to add a timer. And now I can say, I want to go every Sunday night. I want to go at 5 p.m. and to 6 p.m. and I want to quit sources when it's done. And now this is going to run automatically. It's going to run. It's going to record from 5 to 6 p.m. You're going to get the audio because it's too late for Martin to stay up in the Netherlands. And uh, actually, he's sleeping right now. <laughs> Uh, but that's a way you can record things that you want to record. And uh, my friend Margaret listens to, actually, I think it might be, it's a radio show in the Netherlands. It just coincidentally, I just thought of this. She records this radio show in the middle of the night, and she loves it because she can just set this up to record. And, uh, and that, works, that works great. I think that might be, there's probably something I forgot to tell you about this, but uh, let's get some questions going. What, uh, any questions? Yeah. That's a, that's a good question. I do a couple of different things. Um, I still use uh, a program called, uh, called Wiretap Studio. It was from um, Ambrosia Software, and I don't think that's in development anymore. Um, but let's do a reveal and finder. This is what I do with it, is I do a right-click, open with, Wiretap Studio. And this is what I do to clip out little things and to look at the levels and to do a test. Because uh, my, my blind friends think it's hysterical. I can't audio edit audio unless I can see it. It sounds really stupid, but it's like I want to be able to see where that cough is or that dog bark, like right here, look at that. Maybe that's something I want to cut out. I can select that and delete it, and now it's, now it's fixed. It's gone. Actually, that was the wrong kind of delete. I mean, just do a delete. There we go. So it just picked that little piece up and deleted it. So if it's just something like that, that's what I use. Uh, for my day-to-day -day podcasting stuff, though, I compile all the pieces together using the old GarageBand. GarageBand 605, I think it is. So uh, the new GarageBand 10 is not very friendly to podcasting. It's really made more for musicians, and it doesn't have a lot of the features. Uh, when that goes away, I'm thinking probably going to go to Amadeus, which is what a lot of people like. Uh, so I don't I, Amadeus or Amadeus Pro. That's what people have been moving to, I think. So, um, yeah, that's why I used Auto Edit. And that, what you really need is, for, if you're doing a show like mine, is a multi-track editor because I'm bringing in my, my intro music. I'm bringing in, uh, I, do, I do it all post-recording. Uh, well, it's kind of a mixture. I'll record a bunch of audio and then I'll drop in my, my intro and my outro. I don't play the intro and then talk over it. I'm just too spastic. I've tried and can't do it. I always drop it in after the fact. Uh, and then I drop in the, the chit chat across the pond, but you, if you watch the live show, you see me doing these recordings and it's really, really nice to have a live audience because they'll be going, Allison, it's not December, it's June, <laughs> you know, where I just said the wrong date or, or I said my megabytes instead of megabits. I can always count on the chat room to tell me I'm wrong, which is nice actually. And they're usually polite, save, yes, they also, they also remind me to save. Uh, we have, I have an app, a no Cellocast app, that there's a built-in Annoy Allison mode. And it, you're supposed to say save is what it's supposed to say, but people change it to other things to irritate me, so that's nice. Uh, but, but I drop in Chit Chat Across the Pond, and I drop in the music and the jingles for Dumb Question Corner and that kind of thing. And then, uh, but you actually see me recording the, the, the bits that it's just going to be just me. 
So that's why you need a multi-track recorder for that. But if you're just doing a single thing, you could use something like this. But again, I don't think uh, Rogue Amoeba, or I'm sorry, I don't think Ambrosia is still developing this. They used to be able to do things like capture system audio, but when uh, Apple changed the way it was doing it, they went, nope, it's impossible. It can't be done anymore. We give up. And then Rogue Amoeba just went, yeah, you can. Here. Other questions? All right, I haven't seen, oh, I got another one from Leon. Good. You don't want to post-process the audio and take out noise and things like that. Right, right. So I'm thinking to myself, is that what this program would allow one to do? You could set things yeah. to kind of minimize them. So at the end, when you have your final version and your edits are much less than when you can To some extent, a lot of it is, is maybe using something like this to be able to make your test recordings and, and go through a process of elimination. If you've got a 60 hertz hum because you've got your mic sitting on the desk and a lamp and it's, the whole thing's vibrating, this, you can denoise this, but it's gonna sound horrible. I mean, you can sometimes fix it if it's, you know, this was a once in a lifetime, the guy died after you made the recording and you can't ever get this back, yeah, go do it. But it's much better to hear those things and get rid of them ahead of time. Yeah. So I was thinking that so I can actually listen and hear what's going on as I'm talking and doing the presentation. And if there's something that's going wrong or something that I'm noticing as I'm doing it live, I can literally stop the process and go and fix whatever the process is. Right, right. Go ahead, Dave. You haven't, by any chance, mentioned that to Rogue Amoeba yet, have you? David, David, what Dave is saying for the, uh, for the recording, I want to make sure we capture that, is that um, Audio Hijack does have too much of a delay to listen to your own voice, uh, so that isn't a good method of that. It'll pick up if, if you know, Bart's got a problem on, on his end, it'll pick that up, but not what you're doing on your, uh, on your own voice, uh, because you just simply can't listen to it. What he was saying was in Audio Hijack uh, Pro, you could shorten that by changing the buffer size to, to get rid of that lag, uh, or get it minimized to what you could actually stand. And that isn't in there now, but it could be, and they just haven't done it. And Dave would like everybody to write to <laughs> support at rogamoeba.com. <laughs> I didn't say Paul. Uh, to support at rogamoeba.com and ask them for that so that Dave can quit whining about it. I think that's what we're looking for. Oh. He's saying if you, if you increase the sample rate, it fills the buffer faster and shortens up the lag. Did it work? I haven't tried it. Yeah, it's too scary. Well, you just said you yesterday. Okay, that's an interesting so I think, thing. I think, so I think the one thing that so was, I'm waiting for this, the one thing I've learned from listening to Dave and John is having a, a I don't have a mixer because I just don't have the skills for it. And when I plug it, I think it's on my phone, I can actually hear the live. I can hear the live. Sometimes I hear you say, John, do you hear the popping on the, on the recording? And he'll say, no, I don't hear it. And I know that, that he's hearing it. And so I've learned these things. And yeah, thanks, Dave. I've How many people that. appreciate good audio? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Somebody once said, uh, bad audio is fatiguing. It's, it, just, it just makes you tired when you're like, it's too loud and too quiet, too loud. All right, well, I think we're pretty much done here. Um, I've got business cards if anybody wants one for because they can't memorize podfeet.com. Uh, but again, it's a, uh, it's a technology geek podcast with an ever so slight Macintosh bias. In other words, a giant Macintosh bias. <laughs> All right, thank you.